Dude, I have got dogness hair all over the reviewing table. Girlfriend, goodness gracious. Oh, speaking of dude, I'm still filming. I think I'll leave that in. Cleaning up the reviewing table here in the Nut and Fancy Project. Old school knife review time. Not every knife I have in my collection, probably just like you guys, has a serious purpose. Lots don't. Maybe some are just collectibles. I like fondling them. I like looking at them, handling them, using them in an EDC roll. They turn me on that way. You know what I'm talking about? Here are two examples. The Buck Cirrus, not serious, but Buck Cirrus knives. 3.8 ounces, 420 HC steel. I think they're good EDC options, good collectible options, perhaps not so much tactical options. They lack serious traction, actually any traction that's meaningful to me. They have sharp corners. They're brightly colored, but they are good looking, especially against that blue reviewing table. Look at that, that orange flame. Man, I love the looks of that. We haven't seen this knife for a long time, so I always, sometimes I like bringing them out and showing them to you again with what is now a better camera than when I first filmed the review. I think I reviewed these in 08, 09, probably 08, one of my first buck knife reviews. Blue flame pattern, oh, good looking. 420HG steel, of course, not the upper end steel. I really have never liked that locking mechanism they have there in the back, you know, to keep the knife from, you know, folding, whatever. I just don't think you need it. And it's very unergonomic, gets in the way. But as far as collectability, enjoyability, I still love these knives. They are cool. And I'm opening up this review with that intro, not me rolling the table from dog hair, <laughs> which happens every time, by the way. I can't. I don't know where it comes from, but my black, female black lab, I swear, I get, I get her hair everywhere. You, the dog owners know exactly what I'm talking about. Totally worth it, though. Here it comes, the subject of this review. The Buck Paradigm Pro Model 337. Excellent. Is this a serious knife? I want to jump right into philosophy of use in this old school nut and fancy knife review. I will say no it is not. When I say serious, I'm talking about a defensive knife with defensive capability. Now, let, let me caveat that. Uh, I'm going to address the tactical philosophy of use for the Buck Paradigm Pro. Would I personally put this in an emergency defensive role? Probably not. First and foremost, it's slick. It lacks, like I say in a lot of reviews, meaningful traction. If my hand's sweaty, if it's wet, if it's covered with oil, perhaps blood, something like that, is this knife going to stay in my hand? I think the question is probably not. And more importantly, if I do a piercing movement with it, would it go forward and then I cut my own fingers with it. You know, I don't know. I, I Probably not. Secondly, and I'm going to go ahead and jump to speed talking point because they're kind of tied together. It has a very interesting deployment method. Okay, these are ASAP assisted blades right here. I think they're very cool. I like them. Uh, this is also an ASAP. That's what they call the assist mechanism there over at Buck. Everyone, every manufacturer has their own name, proprietary name for it. This also has what's called a shift mechanism. And this is a good idiot knife, by the way, that you give it to your friends. Speaking of just enjoyability, maybe collectability, you give your friends your closed paradigm, and you say, here you go, dude, open it. And what they're going to do is they're going to go, uh, you know, even if they're knife people, they're going to have a little issue with it. They're going to look for a thumb stud, and there's no thumb stud. They're going to look for a deployment hole. There's none of that. Maybe if they're a knife person, they'll go, oh, flipper tank, awesome, and they'll wear out their index finger trying to deploy it that way. Nope, won't work. Check it. Here is the shift mechanism. It, you slide the bolster to that direction, counterclockwise I guess, and now that opens up the flipper deployment and assisted once again. Torsion bar assisted. Nice, it's fun. Getting back to philosophy of use though, is that the best tactical way to get your knife out? It's a two-step motion. You know, having practiced and carried with this knife a little bit now, it's pretty second nature. It is, however, very different from all the other knives I carry. Very different. And remember, if it's something that requires fine motor skills and you're stressed, which will be the case, you may just forget how to bring it open. Uh, a good representation of this is, of course, 
handguns that require condition one carry, there's a safety that the dude just forgets to snick off to shoot the gun. I think this might be just a little bit like that. So in a tactical roll, perhaps not, and therefore maybe as a serious defensive knife, the Buck Paradigm series, maybe not the best choice. But yes, there are so many other ways a knife can serve and bring enjoyment. Collectability. One thing I really love about, and I'm going to jump all over the TPs here, one thing I love about Buck that they're doing these days, beautiful handle materials. Blue, black, polished G10 here on the Buck Paradigm Pro. I think that's gorgeous. They also have that new paper stone on the Vantage Select series. Actually, it's just a Vantage series. I'm going to call it paper stone. It's a recycled handle material. That's beautiful. You see two other examples from earlier nice in the background. They have the diamond wood out. And I'll roll this out too. This is, make sure I get the name right. This is a Vantage Pro S30V steel. There's that diamond wood. I had the hardest time getting to hold one of these knives last year. At SHOT Show 2011, when I visited with the good folks at Buck, good booth review, man, that was fun. Um, I was saying, why? Why was it so hard to obtain these knives? They were really selling hot. I still think they sell well for Buck. This is a Vantage line. It's related to Paradigm line, but that's the handle material I want to show you, the diamond wood. Okay, I think it's, it's cool. So great handle materials, and that brings us back to the philosophy of use, collectability. Uh, I am a sucker for handle materials which turn me on. I'm away from the tactical philosophy of use now, guys. I'm not even talking about that. We're talking about something completely different. We're talking about enjoyment levels, looking at your handle, and just checking the knife out, the craftsmanship, the beauty, the mechanical form and function of the blade. I think that's where the Buck Paradigm Pro, or actually Paradigm, I think they have it in Avid too. And the Avid has 13C26 steel from uh, Sandvik, it's going to be a little bit less expensive. This is S30V, the Pro Steel. Uh, or let me tell you that, by the way, I have it on the table. There are three lines of steel subject to change. Previously reviewed, here's a Buck Vantage Select Small Model 340. This has 420HC stainless steel. Then you step up on the line. I don't have one on the table. It's the Vantage Avid or the Avid line 13C26, and finally the Pro. S30V, top of the line with a Paul Bowes heat treat. Okay, there you go. Quick rundown of the steels in the buck line. Collectability. Absolutely. I would say that's probably the first philosophy of use for this knife. I wouldn't say probably everyday carry is my first one. I would prefer the smaller one for everyday carry. And I'm talking just plain old utility tasks, right? Again, here's a buck vantage select small in 420 HC steel, high carbon. I like this size blade better when I'm just talking about opening packages, maybe some food preparation stuff. This one's a little bit big, and more importantly, this is a much heavier knife. Five ounces. That's chunky, and that weight comes from that uh, shift mechanism sliding bolster, and actually it has those stainless steel bolsters. I am generally not a fan of knives that have bolsters like this. Some guys perhaps are because they feel like it gives the knife a lot more strength, torsional rigidity. I think that's where they come from on that. Um, I don't generally like it. To me, it adds unnecessary weight. In this knife, however, it serves a deployment purpose because of the mechanism, right? So you need that. So that's the price of doing business when you want that innovative deployment method. Very collectible. You could EDC it, no doubt. <clears throat> Guys who don't care about weight, a 5-ounce knife to them is no big deal. Perhaps they're carrying a 20-ounce knife for everyday carry. I don't know. <clears throat> to each his own, for me, too heavy for EDC. There is no way I'm going to be packing this knife around for everyday carry. If it Now let me caveat this because there's a consistency of thought here. Uh, when I talk about tactical philosophy of use and a knife that has def more defensive capabilities, and that's different. I'm willing to take a 5-ounce knife, especially if it has a longer blade, good traction. Okay, philosophy of use, size, and weight. The w blade, by the way, 3 and a quarter inches long. It's exactly the same. I hate to move these beautiful knives off the table, but I'm going to. It's exactly the same length as the Vantage Large, right? In fact, the blades are identical except for some variations in, in you know, deployment. This one has a deployment hole, the Vantage on the bottom. 
Obviously, this one doesn't need it because of the deployment method. Uh, weights we already talked about. And it is a little bit heavier, of course, than these. Speed. Like you saw, it's a quick knife. Once you get that down, you get the shift, you know, the bolster mechanism practiced. It's, clo it's quick for me to close. It's quick to open. Not a big deal. Again, the caveats of defensive use play here, I think. The steel. Well, the cool thing is it is S30V. That's always going to cost you more. And by the way, this knife, like most buck knives, 100% U.S. made. Here you go, baby. You want a U.S. made knife? Go buck. No questions. Maybe all of them are. I don't even know. They have a big product line. I can't keep up with all of them. U.S. made S30V steel. I did a lot of cutting tests with this one. Let me move to the side here and I'll roll that inset in. I was impressed with the S30V stainless steel performance, but not to the level where I was astounded. Maybe astounded would be a good way to describe the Buck Hoodlum. When I went up there in the Moonscape series and thumped on that sucker, I was astounded the way that 5160 steel performed that it still held its razor's edge and I know that's pretty much a played phraseology but it did and uh, it was excellent. The S30V did good, it was excellent but it did dull. It was not miraculous in its edge keeping capability and once again like I've said so many times that cardboard test is harsh. Harsh. You want to go test your blade go thump on it with with some cardboard and tell me how it does. You know, you'll be finding out real quick that most steels are going to dull readily with hard cardboard use. Here's the good news. Oh, and by the way, let me throw this in. I think the S30V stainless steel, even with the Paul Bowes heat treat, which is excellent, by the way, it is a fi fine grain CPM steel. I've talked about it on camera lots and lots. Uh, the thing that really impressed me is the edge I was able to put on it after the cardboard test. Look at that sucker. That is with my Edge Pro Apex. That's me putting the edge on. Oh, daddy like. Yeah, I think I only ran that to about 300 grit. I forget the angle I'm putting on it. I'm ballpark it around 22 to 21 degrees. I don't even know. I forget. I was on the yellow with the Edge, Pe edge Pro Apex. And I will tell you, this is after the cardboard test, and I did stabbing tests with it too. I mean, I did not hold back with this knife. I put it through the ringer. Bros and sisses, check that. Oh my gosh, I can't tell you how stoked I am to be able to do that myself because I think I suck as a blade sharpener. The thing about that CPM S30V, which I really like, there's lots of things. One of them is, is it does take such an extremely fine edge. It's just flat out nasty when you sharpen it to this level. Very keen edge, good stainless resistance. It has good uh, consistency. I, I love S30V. Is it like head and shoulders above all the other steels? I would say probably in this particular knife, probably not. At least in my use, I would have to do a lot more various environmental uses to come up with, I don't know, maybe some more data points. There you go. That's a steel blade shape. It's at drop point. Very typical of Buck. Love it. Great blade shape. The tip is kind of thickish, you can see there. Guys who don't like thin tips on their blades will like the Vantage line, they'll like the Paradigm line. Okay, lock up and strength. First off, let's talk about this. The Vantage line from Buck, probably the Paradigm line as well. Just because of the design, this is where I'm at right now, guys. Sometimes they suffer from blade centering issues. Okay, here comes a Vantage Select Small. I've been carrying this for several months off and on. You can see that one's rubbing the liner a little bit. It deploys well. It goes back into the handle, no problems. It's just more or less an aesthetic thing. I talked about that in the review. I talked about how Buck, Buck's excellent customer service, by the way, one of the best in the industry, you know, fixed the large one, sent me another one. There you go. I think just of the design, you may have some blade centering issues. Let's check this one out. This is a Vantage... Uh, pro and I did have to tweak it and it is perfectly centered okay here's the paradigm perfectly centered I have heard people say there's me screwing up the deployment I have heard people say that their paradigms weren't exactly centered and I think once again you may see that 
the lockup though, as it came out of box, no wiggle at all. Up, down, side to side. You can see the stop pin there. Actually, the stop bar is what I should call it. Out there. Good job. I like the lockup. I find it strong enough. Handle material. I already talked about it. Polished G10. It's gorgeous. Turning, uh, actually meaning right there up there, those stainless steel bolsters, which by the way are stippled from casting, it looks like to me. Not polished. Works fine for me. Actually, that's probably the best finish, don't you think? Because if you have had stainless steel bolsters or highly polished aluminum bolsters, kind of like some of the cold steels I've reviewed, they're going to show wear big time, dudes. Scratches, fingerprints, you know, all the stuff you have going on that day, they're going to wear it. So this knife wears it well. Ergonomically speaking, here we go, back to philosophy of use in some ways. I think it's a comfortable knife for everyday carry. Definitely for fondling, again, tactical use, I would probably say no thank you. No traction really on those polished G10 scales. There's no jimping, top and bottom. I think that for me, I have large size hands, a little bit small for the handle. Okay, I like more grippage, more territory to grip up with. There's your pocket clip, and boy, do I love the Vantage and Paradigm pocket clips. They're excellent, very deep, they're strong, they don't twist, they're securely affixed with Allen head screws. Excellent. By the way, while we're looking at the handle, you can see it's pillar construction flow through design. Mud, blood, or guts flow right on through. Not that you'll ever use that knife that way, right? Polishing on the clip is perfect for the theme of this knife, I would say. And it does carry tip up, thank you very much. You can reverse it for left and right. Lefties, I don't know if you'll dig it so much because, of course, as you can see, it is situated for right-handed use. There's a little, little something something to think about. Ergonomics are good. They are not excellent, depending on what you're going to do with a knife, if you're, if you're following my train of thought. Durability. Well, first and foremost, I would say durability on the Buck Paradigms is going to be excellent. Remember, they have the forever warranty from Buck. Anything ever goes on with it, send it back. They will fix it. I think the S30V Steel in the Pro, the Paradigm Pro, outstanding. <coughs> with the stuff that I mentioned. In other words, there's a lot of great steels out there, guys, and I'm not going to be one to say, oh, S30 is all that. 154 CM, I love. I like a good OS 8. Those Sandvik steels, 14C28N, 13C26, excellent steels. So many good steels. In some ways, it's almost impossible, not possible. It's tougher to go wrong. I think durability would be excellent. Like the tip is strong. I don't think it'll break off that readily. Sure didn't in my stabbing tests. Worked fine. Value. Here we go. Uh, I would say, remember, it's S30V steel in the Paradigm Pro here. If you go with the Avid, that's 13C26. It's going to be less expensive. Let's see. Did I have a price down? Yeah, the 336 Paradigm Avid, around 86 bucks. Could be a little bit more, a little bit less. This knife right here, about 103 There's your S30V pricing coming through. That's just what it is. That's... That's your ticket to get in the movie theater with the S30V steel. I don't care if it's from Buck, Benchmade, whoever. That's going to, your price for S30 is going to be out there. You guys know that. Um, the Vantage, I'm not really reviewing here. I'm just kind of throwing there. The that's a the Vantage Pro. Do I have a price written down for that? Yeah, I think I do somewhere. I think it's around 80ish, something like that. That's an S30 uh, blade as well. I would say it's kind of up there for value. Okay, let's throw in some options. Okay, I want to say around a five ounce carry weight, around 100 to maybe $110. That means we could look at, and these are not necessarily the same philosophy of use knives. In other words, to me, this is primarily collectible, secondarily EDC, maybe, maybe, maybe tactical, not so much though. But this one I'm going to roll in front of the camera to me is first and foremost. Tactical Blade, Spyderco, G10 Police, oh my gosh, love it. Five ounces, $111, give or take some. Dwarfs, uh, at least in blade length, uh, Vantage Select. I've been carrying this lot, so it's got a bunch of pocket length on it. Love it. This is one of my go-to Tactical Blades, fellas, I'm, I'm just saying. Okay, so there's, a, there's another option for you. How about the Benchmade McHenry Williams 710? This one dirt-coated by me talked and shown to you guys a lot. 
about the same price. It's 4.8 ounces, even slightly lighter than the Paradigm Pro, about $107. Not the Duracoat job, I'm talking just plain Jane version. By the way, I sharpened this one too on that Edge Pro Apex. Sick! <laughs> oh my gosh, I love sharp knives. They just make my day. Okay, there's the 710 McHenry Williams. This one is not in the same category for price. It is for weight. Cold Steel, new model, American Lawman. 4.6 ounces, $62. Love those Cold Steel knives. The new designs are Recons, American Lawmans. Oh, don't get me started. Beautiful knives. A new AK-47. Aus 8 steel, though. It's a more affordable, in some people's eyes, an inferior steel to that. Now, there's a traction plan for you, boys. Look at that high traction G10 on that. Oh, my goodness. There you go. Just a couple other blades to consider. Same price, same ballpark. Are they going to be as cool as the Buck Paradigm Pro? Mm, I would say not even close. Uh, just for that unique and very fun deployment method with a shift mechanism. It's fun, guys. It's fun playing with. Uh, it is on the heavy side, though. For me, EDC, definitely on the heavy side. It is, to me, mostly a collectible, especially with that gorgeous handle material. The fit and finish, by the way, is superb. Here's how you'd adjust your centering if you have an issue. Make sure you Loctite that. Loctite it. I don't know if I showed you that side. Blade finish is nice, too. Much higher quality than the Select line. Where's that small Select? I'll show you what I'm talking about. See the grind? Not really grind marks, but just the vertical striations on the blade grind there. Where you see the grinding wheel worked it. That's not, to me, very attractive. This is superior. Should be. It's S30V blade steel, right? Yeah. Uh, it's not a tactical blade. It's a gorgeous collectible. It's a great EDC knife. It is worth the money, and it's 100% made in the United States. Okay, support U.S. knife makers like Buck. We love Buck here in the Nut and Fancy Project. That is the Buck Paradigm Pro and actually Avid, too, even though I don't have one on the table. See ya.